the world leader in MMA. Experience it on FS1. Welcome to Las Vegas. International Fight Week has already taken over the strip, but now it's time to usher in this weekend's Octagon action. Tomorrow, they fight tonight. They weigh in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first of three nights of coverage for the biggest week in combat sports. I'm Karen Bryant, alongside two gentlemen of distinction, the bantamweight champion, Mr. Dominic Cruz, and the middleweight king, Michael Bisping. Megan O'Leary will be reporting for us as well, and we have got a strawweight title on the line. Plus, two Ultimate Fighter winners will be crowned tomorrow night. We will get to the weigh-ins momentarily, but obviously, the biggest news of the day is John Jones. Last night, the UFC made the stunning announcement that Jones was flagged for a potential USADA violation and has been removed from his UFC 200 bout against Daniel Cormier. Jones called the press conference this morning in light of the allegations. Here's what the emotional interim champion had to say. I want to first uh, start by apologizing to all the fans who came out to support me for UFC 200. I want to apologize to Daniel Cormier. I know that uh, this fight means a lot to him. The fight meant a lot to me, and the fight's not happening. So, just really wanted to apologize to everybody sincerely. So now, the former co-main event between Brock Lesnar and Mark Hunt is your new headliner. Dana White said Daniel Cormier will, in fact, fight on Saturday. He's actively looking for an opponent. But, Dominic, what can you say about this turn of events? You know, there's not much you can say except, sorry, Daniel Cormier to an extent. But at the same time, John Jones did not want this to happen. He put in a full training camp. I know he didn't mean to take that. I, I believe he didn't mean to take some, uh, some prohibited substance, but the, the fact is he did. And he's already found guilty because they've already announced it on the internet. And that's part of the issue with this is it's already been announced, so it's already what it is, regardless of what case they go through with. So I just, best wishes to him, and I hope they get a replacement for Daniel Cormier, to be honest. You know, Dominic, I respect the fact that you're willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, but from, from my money, there's no smoke without fire. This isn't the first time that John Jones has made a mistake. It's one thing after the other. And here we are now, two days before UFC 200, and he's pulled for a steroid issue. And as you say, I respect the fact you're willing to let due course take process. You're giving him the benefit of the doubt. But as I say, there's no smoke without fire. Well, and to that point, guys, do you believe that John Jones can regain the goodwill of the fans? He's already overcome a lot, and they were really rooting for him. And now this. You know, he just needs to stay out of trouble for a long period of time, wipe the slate clean completely. That's what will decide if he will ever be back in fighting again or not, is if he can stay out of trouble for a long slated amount of time when he's not competing. Competing for a lot of us is what keeps us out of a trouble. Now, they've taken that from him. So he's got to stay out of trouble, keep training, keep getting better, and then try to come back. It's, it's tough, but it can be done. For John to get the faith of the fans back is going to be very, very hard. On UFC tonight a couple of days ago, the fans loved him. He came on set and they were going crazy. Every time you mentioned his name, there was a huge cheer. Now he's pulled from the card, probably, probably for a steroid issue. They're gonna lose faith. For him to be loved again, it's gonna be very, very hard. Yeah, he really was great with us on UFC tonight and said that he has been living sober and we will see what happens with this. Of course, folks, tomorrow night for the Ultimate Fighter finale, we have got a lot of incredible fights coming your way. Of course, the main event is gonna be something special when Yoada and Claudia go at it for the second time. It is time for us to head down to the scale. You know, as you know, the uh, procedure has changed for the weigh-ins. They actually weighed in earlier this morning. But, of course, we do need to make things official. For that, we are going to send it down to our master of ceremonies. His name is Mike Goldberg, and he has taken over right now. What's going on, Las Vegas? What a great week, International Fight Week. We've got fights tonight at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Lightweight title on the line tomorrow night. The ultimate fighter. Beautiful women. UFC President Dana White. Joe Silva, Sean Shelby. A title on the line tomorrow and two new fighters will become the ultimate fighter. We begin in the welterweight division. Lee Xinling against Anton Zabir. Anton Zafir is currently a high school teacher. And that's something that he carries into this octagon with him everywhere he goes. God is nicknamed the professor because of that occupation. He's won five of his last six fights, 
and he's representing himself and fighting out of Australia. Should be an interesting fight, looks to be in great shape, especially for a teacher. 170. Anton Severe, 170 pounds. And his opponent, Lee Shinley. Traveling from Beijing to Las Vegas would be taxing on both his mind and his body if he flew in just for fight week. So he headed out here to the fight capital a few weeks early and has been training all over town to get ready for his fifth octagon appearance. this matchup with Jake Matthews. The Las Vegas resident said he's much more educated than Jake is when it comes to fighting. And he believes the ground advantage will be his world. He said, when it comes to grappling, they just don't know how to spell wrestling in Australia. 155 for the Motown Vita. And his opponent, the Celtic Kid, Jake Matthews. Jake Matthews is UFC career is getting off to a great start, but this will be the first time he's actually fought in America and of course in Las Vegas. So this he wants to use this fight to really establish himself and use it as a springboard to establish his brand in America so that people know who he is. This guy has a lot of potential, he's a great young prospect, and as I say, wants to establish himself. Up in the middleweight division, Caesar Bahena and Anthony Smith. First man to the scale, Anthony Lionheart Smith. Anthony Smith, Gracie Purple Belt is what he's known for as his ground game. 15 first round finishes. He fights out of Omaha, Nebraska, and he's fought over 30 amateur events in Omaha, currently on an eight fight win streak. This is a guy who comes out hungry and ready to go right off the bat. 185 for Anthony Smith. This guy's got a great streak going and he's extremely and tough to deal with. Cesar Mutante Bahena. So Mutante came off the ultimate fight and was certainly a hot prospect and started racking up the wins, but he lost a couple and he had to have surgery. Adler had to have eight screws put in his back, so I can only imagine what that must have felt like. After that, he kind of lost confidence because of the injury. But he was worried that the screws were going to come loose, and I can certainly understand that. But now he's confident in his body. He's confident the screws are going to stay in place. He's coming off a win, and he feels that now he's going to show the world the best of his ability. He says that he only fought on 20% of his actual ability in the past. Now, of course, everybody has an excuse, and everybody says that. But to go so low and say 20%, my word. 186, the official way in for If Cesar that is true, that he was only fighting on 20%, then we got some good stuff to come from this guy. And he is Vitor Belfort's protege. Oh, for sure. Moutonch. I can't wait for this fight. This is a sleeper fight. Both these guys are going to brawl, meet in the middle, and just throw down. Next up in the light heavyweight division, Corey Hendricks and Josh. I spoke with Josh this morning. He said his weight cut went very well. He doesn't struggle much to make 205 pounds, but he loved the option of the early morning weigh-in. Says for this fight, he is super excited, but staying very focused because he's pictured walking out to the UFC cage and has had a million times. Now that he gets to live out that dream, he's going to make it count. 
We can expect fireworks from him tomorrow. We also want to remind everybody that he is from East Liverpool, Ohio, priding himself on coming from a small town, knows everybody back there has got his back, and he is looking to put on a great show tomorrow. Really nice guy that we met on The Ultimate Fighter, got a second chance in this season, and uh, wish him best of luck. After withdrawing from his semifinal matchup during season 23 of The Ultimate Fighter due to a neck injury, Corey Hendricks will get a redemption of sorts when he gets a second chance to prove himself inside the octagon against fellow tough contestant Josh Stansbury. is in the flyweight division. John Moraga and Mateus Nicolau. First Mate to the scale, Mateus Nicolau. Nicolau. He's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He started at 13 years of age. He was also on Brazil number four. He was Team Shogun back in that episode. He's been a pro since 2010, and this is a guy who also trains under Andre Paneris. 125 and a half for Nicolau. Coming from Novo and Yao camp, expected for him to have great Muay Thai background and, and extremely good takedown defense also. Moraga. It's been over a year since number six ranked flyweight John Moraga has stepped foot inside the octagon. He was battling an inner ear injury which occurred during his bout at UFC 187, but Chicano calls himself a thinker. He said when he wasn't physically training this past year, he was still analyzing things and studying the game. John Moraga officially weighs in at 126 pounds. John Moraga and Mateus Nicolau. Next up, our feature preliminary matchup on FS1 in the featherweight division. Freddie Maynard and Fernando Bruno. Another Andre Pettineris team member was also Team Noguera, Noguera, excuse me, on Tough Brazil number four. His nickname means The Butcher. If that has anything to say with what he plans to do, it's gonna be a good night of fighting for him. His hero is also his coach, Andre Pedneris. That's somebody that this guy looks up to very much in Bruno and probably has a long career with him. Still works as a cook while he's fighting. That's something that not everybody can say. So that's why he calls himself The Butcher. I think that that would make a perfect point at this point. That makes sense. It does. Thank you, Dominic. His opponent, Gray Maynard. Well, we have the Butcher taking on the Bully. Now, if you look at Gray Maynard and you're new to this sport, you know, it's fair to say he's kind of struggled lately. And it's easy to forget that this guy had an amazing resume. I mean, if you look at some of the wins, I'll just shut up a second for the weight. 145 and a half officially for Gray Maynard. Some of the people that he's beaten, Kenny Florian, Clay Guida, Frankie Edgar, and of course, the man of the moment, Mr. Nate Diaz. You know, it's Ray easy to forget the success that he's Bruno had in the past. And in the he wants to remind division. everybody that he's still here and they're still fighting this guy. Up next, our first fight on the main card live on FS1. Joaquin Silva against Andrew Holbrook. Andrew, Hol Andrew Holbrook Andrew is a Holbrook. southpaw. That makes things tricky for everybody that he fights. And it's because he's good with his hands at the same time. He's finished 10 of his 11 wins with nine first round knockouts and finishes mixed together. He also had a job at Sherwin Williams. One to 55 and a half for Andrew Holbrook. Which is a job I had before I started fighting. So I'm with him on that. I was also a delivery man. Yeah, and Southpaws are a nightmare. 
Silva believes this bout with Andrew Holbrook will be a very strategic one. Even though they're both very accomplished grapplers, Silva said he's been so comfortable on the feet now that he's actually been using his striking more than his grappling. He plans to wear Holbrook out on the feet, then display his jiu-jitsu prowess. Tiago Tavares may not know how to pronounce his opponent's name, that is, Du Ho Choi, but he certainly understands what he's facing in terms of their matchup tomorrow night. He believes the South Korean knockout artist will end up making a mistake that he can capitalize on by getting him to the ground and finishing him. Looking very relaxed. He's enjoying himself. 146 for Tiago Tavares. Man, the guy's been here enough times, right? And his opponent, the Korean Superboy, Do Ho Joy! So they say don't judge a book by its cover, and I think that applies for this guy, because if you look at him, you know, he looks like butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. He's a, a very mild-mannered looking guy. He looks like a nice guy that you want to hang out with. He, you know, he looks like he wouldn't hurt a fly. Wrong. This guy is an absolute killer. 13 and 1. 10 knockouts, that's 10. 46 for Joy. And it's the way that he does it. I mean, this guy is a vicious striker, believe you me. Knocks people out, true explosive knockout power. One punch knockout power. Look out for this guy. And do not judge that book by its cover. A very friendly face, huh? Do he hold sure He and looks like a nice guy. Tomorrow. I mean, you might see him and think, ah, this guy's nothing, you know? Our next one on FS1 in the lightweight division. So Will Brooks was the champion. Will Brooks. Will Brooks was the champion of another organization, but he always wanted to fight in the UFC, and here it is. So you might think that might bring a lot of nerves, some octagon jitters, as they call them. But he says there's no such thing; they don't exist. The official weight: 156 pounds for Will Brooks. He says it's all about preparation, and he's been preparing for this moment his and entire his life. Opponent, so he doesn't care. He's just happy to be here and fighting Ross Pearson. Well, when, you, when you're fighting a guy like Ross Pearson, you better be prepared. He started training in judo and taekwondo with his mom, who brought him in at 17 years old to work all these martial arts. Let's let him weigh in real quick. He now has over 20 fights and just 20 in the UFC. He's from Sunderland, England. And the way he fights in the pocket, plus the neck tattoos, I swear he's Mexican. Will Brooks, tomorrow night. Yeah, welcome to the Our UFC. You're fighting Ross Pierce. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Have fun yeah. This season of the Ultimate Fighter, Tatiana Suarez and Amanda ABC Cooper. First to the scale, Amanda Cooper. Amanda Bobby Cooper, ABC as we know her, had some difficulty on the show this season making weight. She had a very, very tough cut for her last fight. This morning she told me, though, that this was the best cut she's ever had to 115 pounds. And even though she knows she is about to enter into the biggest fight of her career, she said she's surprisingly calm and she's just looking to take in the moment, enjoy herself, and get her hand raised tomorrow night. 116 officially for Amanda Cooper. She has a boxing background, great boxing background. Tatiana Golden Gloves Suarez. amateur champion. Tatiana was the first overall pick on the Ultimate Fighter season 23. She made it to the finale and she's looking to prove why she was top of the crop. The thyroid cancer survivor said when she started the show, this is exactly where she planned on being. She said all the hard work is done. She's ready to have fun. One,
So even though everybody pretty much got along on the show, the truth is that Tatiana is not really a huge ABC fan. Tatiana Suarez and Amanda Cooper. So she's looking to put the heart in the final in the light heavyweight division. Andrew Sanchez and Khalil Roundtree. On the first episode of The Ultimate Fighter, Dana said Khalil Roundtree is a beast, and I'm telling you, he wasn't wrong. If you Google search this guy, if you Google search the oh, former sandwich head. technician from Jimmy John's, <laughs> actually, that's what he used to do for a living. I'm not to be a sandwich technician myself, actually, by the way. But if you um, if you Google this guy, you just see videos of him knocking people out. This guy is true knockout power with his hands, with his feet. Two, oh, five and a half for Roundtree. And I think I, I think beast is a fitting word to describe this guy. He always goes for the finish, very aggressive. And his opponent, Andrew Elderton. Andrew Sanchez is actually very well-rounded. He's going to need to be well-rounded in this matchup in order to get this win going. He started in Taekwondo at the age of only 13, and then that and leads him over to uh, wrestling. He's a four-time All-American, two-time national champ, 2011 NAIA Wrestler of the Year. I mean, this guy can Officially, wrestle. Officially, 199 and a half, Perel Duarte. Naturally was on. Team Claudia on Tough 23, and I cannot wait for these guys to throw down because become this is a good matchup. Well, and as you heard, he's weighing at 199. You know, he can fight at 185 pounds, but he says he is not intimidated by Khalil's size and power, and really believes he's going to be able to push the pace against the bigger man. Joanna Janjicek, Claudia Gadela. This is a battle of unbeatens. In my heart and in my head, I still am an undefeated fighter. I didn't lose that fight. I took her down seven times. Uh, Claudia, it's MMA, it's in Jiu-Jitsu. You cannot lie on the person for 15 minutes. You must do something. Oh, I think that Claudia Gadella is jealous who I am, uh, how, how good and nice I am, how good fighter I am. Uh, she would like to be on my spot. But she can. I'm simply the best. I think Johanna is a very bad person. I don't like anything about her. I hate her. Go home. Where? <laughs> Go to the jungle. Where's your place? Yeah. I'm gonna put you in shame. Do it. Oh! Johanna Jonjecek is probably one of the best strikers in all of mixed martial arts, period. A woman who looks better every time we see her in the octagon. Oh, God. Complete, total domination. She is a nasty, mean, aggressive champion. Claudia Gedalia, in her last fight, put on a sensational performance against Jessica Aguilar. She showed everything that you would want to see to get another shot at Ioana Janjecek. I learned to be more mean. Before Ioana's fight, I. I didn't used to do that, and now I want to do more damage in my fights. I want to hurt people. I am the best strawweight in the world, and I'm going to prove that. After this fight, she's not going to talk anymore. More respect to the champion. More respect for me. Yeah? You should respect me. You've got enough respect. I can't wait to shut him out. I'm going to punch you so hard. So Let's much go. pain. She has to pay for everything that she said. We always talk. Shut up. Shut up. Her nightmare is coming. Claudia Gadella, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for your face and for your head. I'm just going to prove one more time that I'm the best. I'm simply the best strawway champion of the world. The coaches collide with the strawway championship on the line. The challenger, Claudia Gadella. When Jacek is dealt with a lot of females that she's fought and beaten them before she got in there. Gadella is not one of those females. She is ready to fight. She's ready to be mean. She wants to be champion. She's hungry. 115 pounds officially. And she's not just she's not just hungry. She's a black belt, a three-time BJJ brown belt, and world champion. She is not somebody you can sleep on, and she's ready to go. Well, Young JJ stands by all her actions, all her comments on The Ultimate Fighter. Of course, they don't like each other, 
But she sees Claudia trying to take everything she's got, everything she's achieved, her world title, her dreams. What a 14 and a half for the champion! That's the girl that's trying to take it from her. So she says, I said what I said, I did what I did, and I couldn't care less. And you know what? Good for her. And look at this. Never fails to disappoint. Always with the mind games, always with the drama, the theatrics. It's gonna be a good fight, guys. I can't wait for this one. Well, and for those who don't know, they actually did get into a little bit of a scrap on the Ultimate Fighter set after filming ended. Uh, depending tomorrow on who you ask, you'll find out who won, but we'll Why? see the real deal tomorrow. The title. Gonna visit first with Carl Jacadelia. The animosity is, is so fierce. Tomorrow you finally get to fight. The night has finally come. What's your game plan? Uh, I'm very ready for this. You know, I've been training for this for so long, and I'm ready to get in there and put a lot of pressure in her and do what I know to do, which is MMA. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. The Brazilian Claudia Gadelha. And a visit with the champion, your honor, you and Jay Check. You've always been fierce inside the octagon, but you've never been this emotional about an opponent. What bothers you so much about Claudia Gadelha? I'm so calm. I'm so focused until Friday. Then I will be all up. I Good. finish her. I promise to all of you. The belt stays with me. The champion, Joanna, Leon Jacek. Don't forget, fight tonight, fight tomorrow. UFC 200 on Saturday. So long, everybody. Well, there you have July 7th, the UFC's most competitive division takes center stage at MGM Grand. Lightweight champion Rafael Dos Anjos puts it all on the line against striking specialist Eddie Alvarez. Plus, heavyweight knockout artists Roy Nelson and Derek Lewis go fist to fist in a clash that has sudden ending written all over it. UFC Fight Night, Dos Anjos versus Alvarez. Part of the UFC International Fight Week in Las Vegas. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. On Friday, July 8th, UFC International Fight Week hosts a bad blood showdown with the finale of The Ultimate Fighter Season 23. In the main event, undefeated UFC strawweight champion Joanna Young Jacek defends her title in a heated rematch against rival coach Claudia Gadelia. Plus, two new Ultimate Fighters will be crowned. It's the Ultimate Fighter finale live at MGM Grand Garden Arena. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com.